Hi everyone, my name is Dong Lu. I am a senior concept artist working in the video game industry. In today's workshop, I will show you how I use SketchUp to set up a 3D base for speeding up the digital painting process in Photoshop. I have used many different techniques for my digital paintings, such as using custom brushes, custom shapes, photo bashing, mixed media, etc. However, it is always a challenge to pick the best angle to represent a complex scene by doing merely black and white sketches from scratch. Moreover, I am not a fast modeler. Attempting to make a 3D base has always slowed down my creation process. Two years ago, I started to experiment with SketchUp, and it became a great surprise for me because of its simplicity and the fast learning curve. So in this tutorial, I will explain the key functions that I use in SketchUp in order to speed up the painting process later on and most importantly, to understand a complex scene from every possible camera angle. OK, let's get started! My goal with this software is never to master it completely, but rather to concentrate my energy on the essential tools that I need to accomplish the modeling process quickly and effectively. What I use the most are the line, arcs, and rectangle tools, push-pull tool, offset tool, and also the manipulation tools, such as move, rotate, and scale. How I use them is very similar to the drawing process. I first draw the 2D forms and then push them to become 3D volumes. Here are a few samples to show how fast and simple are those basic tools.
Here is the model that I'm making in SketchUp. As you can see, this is not a fully completed 3D scene. Some structures are floating in the air and the edges can be worked on a little bit more. But this is more than what I need as the base of my painting. Don't fall into the trap of making everything perfect in 3D. We are making a concept art here, not a 3D final product. Anything that can be fixed easily and quickly in the digital painting later on, don't fix it in 3D in order to save production time. Okay, so now I'm going to talk a little bit about styles in SketchUp. Styles dedicate how your model will be displayed in SketchUp. A bit like the filter effects on images in Photoshop, if I have to make the comparison. You can see the models as line art, brushwork, simple textures, etc. I especially love using the line art style in order to examine my model form without extra texture details that can distract me from getting the interesting silhouette. For my painting base, I need two styles, line art style and the simple style. I will use them as passes to get my painting process. Here I'm selecting different style options that SketchUp offers. As you can see, there's a pretty wide range of choices. Shadow is a powerful tool to create appealing compositions. When I used to do my thumbnail studies in the traditional way, it was always a challenge to imagine the lighting scenarios. However, it becomes really simple with the shadow setting in SketchUp. It allows me to pick a specific time zone, date, and the time of the day to see the effect of the shadow and light on my model. The possibilities become endless. I love playing with those sliders to see how I can bring my compositions to the next level by varying the shadow setting. Scene management in SketchUp. This is where I save the different camera angles that I choose. Being able to examine your scene from all kinds of different angles is probably one of the biggest advantages of having a 3D base compared to the traditional thumbnail sketching. Not only that you can rotate your camera freely, but you can also easily adjust the field of view, which allows you to have wide lens and telescopic lens. In the scene management window, you can click on the different thumbnails to go back and forth between the saved camera angles in order to pick the best option for the digital painting. After all the work that I have done, I'm bringing the passes that I need in Photoshop. Just in case that there are many passes to be imported, you don't need to open each of them and drag them one by one in the painting window. Photoshop has a great function for this. Simply go to File, Scripts, Load Files into Stack. 
Now just sit back and watch Photoshop does the work by itself. All the passes will be imported neatly into one window automatically. Spreading colors using a textured brush. In this step, it's very important to let the 3D passes just to guide you but not to limit your creation process. I decrease the simple texture layer opacity and create a new layer on top of it. I use my textured brush to spread colors freely on the canvas. As you can observe, I don't even let the colors on the basic texture layer to dictate my palette. I'm using a light purple-blue tone to bring up the color vibrancy in the painting. At some point during this freestyle painting process, I realized that I need my 3D base back to give me more guideline for the architectural structures. That's when I would duplicate my simple layer texture and overlay it on top of my current painting. 
I play with the opacity of the layer to blend it with my painting seamlessly. I create a new layer and continue to apply brush strokes on the image, especially in the areas where the 3D textures become more obvious to the eyes. Now I take a step back from the painting and analyze my value structure. I'm planning to do a backlit lighting scenario, so I would brighten the sky to pop out the silhouette of the castles.
I also apply a subtle layer of fog on the ground level. It gives the foreground more breathing space and it shows greater depth in the image. In order to add more details on the main castle structures, I use photo integration on top of the current painting. Here are some cathedral photos that I have taken during my trip to Mexico. The architecture details are very appropriate for the upper part of the castles. I will cut out the parts that I need and use the transform tools to distort the perspective so they can fit with my painting. Also, I highly recommend that you take your own pictures. It is also fine to use the loyalty-free stock pictures on the internet. To see more of my photo packs, you can search Don't Lose Gum Road in Google to find more of my products. Now I'm being very careful with this photo integration part because I don't want to destroy the nice brush feel that I have got so far. I use a very small textured brush to continuously paint on top of the photos so they can blend better with the rest of the painting. With time, I develop my own process rhythm, photo bashing, painting on top of the photos, and erasing part of the photos. I repeat this cycle as long as it's needed.
Now I want to talk a little bit about edge contrast. Edge contrast is one of the most important notions that I use for my painting. Because of my art school background, I love to keep the brush feel in my paintings. But how I can do it without the impression of losing details? The answer is edge contrast. Every important form, object, character in my painting needs a clean silhouette. The silhouette can be painted with textured brushes, but its value needs to maintain certain contrast level with its surrounding values. That's how your eyes can easily distinguish the forms without being distracted by the brush strokes.
We're almost at the end of the tutorial. At this stage, I love to add some characters to show the scale of the scene and to hint some vague storyline at the same time. I'm adding a dragon to further enhance the fancy theme of this painting. I also add some birds in the sky, an old but effective trick to add some life in large sceneries. I zoom out the painting and I analyze various areas that need more work.
I always like to finish my painting with few adjustment layers in order to tweak the contrast, color temperature, and the brightness of the scene. I also like to apply a subtle chromatic operation in the image. Simply go to Filter, Lens Correction, Custom, and play with the chromatic operation sliders. I hit OK once I'm happy with the result. I really hope that you have enjoyed today's tutorial and have learned a few tricks. Have fun painting!